is Callie B and I'd like to welcome you to my first full length crochet tutorial. Um, I have a lot of other tutorials planned for uh, knitting patterns uh, and crochet patterns as well. Um, this is going to be a tutorial for my popular uh, Clucky the Kitchen Chicken pattern. I've had a lot of requests for a video um, accompaniment. Apparently a lot of people like video tutorials as well as written. So um, to get things started, uh, this is the same hook that I used in my last uh, tutorial for the Magic Circle, which I will link to down below. This is a 9mm Yarnology hook from Hobby Lobby. And anyone who knows me knows that one thing that I love even, well, second secondary to yarn probably would be getting good bargains. And another thing that I don't really hear people in the crochet or knitting world to talk about very much are budget supplies. But I'd like to show you for a second the other hooks you'll be needing. You'll be needing a 5mm hook and a 3.5mm hook. Um, these are actually, they don't really have a brand. I got these on Wish. I got a whole set for about $2. And I really like them because I'm a fan of the tapered style hook. I will use any kind. But I, you know, in particular, I kind of like that Susan Boy style hook. Um... These have been very good. I've had them a long time now. They're sturdy. They're not bendable. They're, they're smooth. I would highly recommend anyone needing a cheap set of crochet hooks, uh, beginners or, or, you know, experienced crocheters alike, to just go on Wish and get themselves a nice little set. I really think that it's worth it. Um, I've got some Premier Yarn, size 5, for the body. It's kind of a conglomerate because I have all different brands. Uh, I've got some Line Brand Hometown USA for the... Uh, for the comb of the chicken, and then I've got some mainstays worsted weight yarn for the beak. Um, I'm going to be doing a review very soon for the mainstays uh, worsted weight yarn. I'm actually pretty fond of it. I've heard a lot of negative reviews about it, but I can tell you from experience, it's a lot softer than Red Heart Super Saver. It's cheaper, um, and it doesn't fray like at all. It has a mild shrinkability. I'm just a really huge fan of it. I think it's a great budget yarn, and as I said, I'll very soon be having a review uh, on the blog of that, which I will also link to down below. Okay, to get started, we're going to start with a magic circle, which I have a tutorial for, um, as I said before, uh, and the link to that is down below. Um, you're just going to wrap your yarn around, make your two lines, insert, loop, and pull through. The clucky is very simple. It's uh, you're only going to be using a few stitches: double crochet, um, the slip stitch, and a shell stitch. Yarn over twice, and I'll put a picture of the pattern alongside the video so you can go along with me. So you're just going to do 12 double crochets in the magic circle. And you may be able to tell, but this video is a little bit rushed. I've been behind schedule today, and I really don't have a particularly great place to film at the moment. So I'm relying on the rapidly fading natural lighting to help me. And again, if you need help learning how to do double crochets into the magic circle, check out the tutorial below. I'm not going to really go into that right now. But the tutorial will explain it in depth, so if you need help with that, go for it. Okay, so now you should have your 12 double crochets in the magic circle. Go ahead and take that tail and pull it, and you're going to see, see it makes a nice little round, as explained in the video tutorial below. Then you're just going to find that very first stitch, make a slip stitch, pull the tail. Now the second row for Clucky begins with a chain one. And for his whole body, you're just going to be doing double crochets. So next, we do two double crochets in each stitch. And you know, this is a very simple crochet pattern. Um, it should be easy for beginners as well, and uh, it's cute enough for really just anybody who wants to 
wants to make a little chicken and they're quite popular kitchen decor items and honestly uh, I've had a lot of requests for me to make these um, I've had orders for them already within just a few days of posting them and they make great gifts so there's just a lot you can do with this pattern it's simple it's fast and it's cute so you really can't go wrong I will mention though that if you want to use your clucky the kitchen chicken as more than just a decor item to be you know hung up or set on a table if you want to use it for a pot holder uh, any high heat situation you need to use 100% cotton yarn um, or an equivalent acrylic yarns will melt under high heat so just keep that in mind I'm making mine in acrylic because uh, the people who actually ordered this one they're just going to be using it as, you know, a decor item. And honestly, they're so cute. I wouldn't really want to use one in a high heat situation, I don't really think. Another note about acrylic yarn is that a lot of patterns don't really call them for washcloths, but I personally like acrylic washcloths as well as cotton. Um, I think they make decent dishcloths. I prefer cotton for my dishcloths, but if you're going to make a washcloth set for somebody, I think acrylic is just fine. You have less shrinkability. If you get the right brand, it can be very, very soft. And uh, if anyone has a cotton problem, there's always acrylic. You don't really have to worry about anyone having a, a reaction to acrylic yarn. So, I don't know. It comes highly recommended by me. So two in each stitch. And you know, once you've made a clucky or two, you'll probably memorize the pattern. It's, guys, it's really that simple, you know. I think most patterns that start with magic circle are pretty simple. As you can see, I'm kind of speeding along as best as I can. Then you're just going to slip stitch into that first stitch again. Make sure you got both sides of the stitch. Next, you're going to do a simple one double crochet in the first stitch, then two in the next, then one, then two. It's very easy, it's very common. Uh, it's actually how you begin to make any flat, perfectly round circle in, in magic circle method crocheting. So, we're going to do two in this next one. It's super easy, just uh, as you can see, I'm just going to do one stitch into this stitch, and then two in the next, as I said. And it's easy, if you're not used to doing this, it's easy enough to see where you're going to be needing to place the stitch because the post of your stitch will be attached to the loop. So it's really, really difficult to make a mistake. And it's okay if you do. Crochet is very, very easy to correct. A lot easier to correct than knitting, in my opinion, because you're only working with, you know, one live loop at a time. So. I'm going to leave you guys to it and I will meet you once this round is finished. Okay, so now we're ready to begin row four. You should have uh, slip stitched your circle together as shown. You're just gonna chain one and you're gonna be doing something very similar with this row. You're going to be doing one double crochet in the first two stitches. Just like this. And this is just a, a way of increasing the size of the circle. It's all you're doing. And then after those two, one in two, and then you're going to do two stitches in this one stitch. You should have 38 stitches when you're finished with this round. And I'm just being eaten alive with bugs out here. 
So one stitch, two, and then two in one. It's very, very simple. Row five is where it gets interesting, so I will meet you at row five. So now we've reached the end of row four, and what you're going to do is instead of going all the way around the circle, this time you're going to leave one, two, three, four, five, six empty stitches. Well, actually, you're going to do a slip stitch across, but you're not going to continue your double crochets there. So just do a simple slip stitch, insert your hook, yarn over once, and then pull through both loops six times. And that will complete your row four. So next, you're going to begin with creating your shell stitch border. And uh, actually, I may put an extra slip stitch in there. Don't be afraid to improvise in patterns if something ever looks wrong. <laughs> That's one thing I learned. Okay, so after that lighting difficulty, I waited until the following day. And here we are in a hopefully slightly uh, better lit area um, to finish the pattern here. Um, last night we finished up with our, uh, we did our slip stitches across and now I'm going to quickly show you uh, just how to do the little border for the feathers. Um, let's see, you're gonna chain one and then we are going to actually, I'm counting, go ahead and do a single crochet in the next stitch over. So single crochet. And what this does is this is going to anchor your shell stitch in place. So in this next stitch, we're gonna begin the shell stitch. It's very simple. All it is is five double crochets in one stitch and then an anchor. So I'm gonna walk you through that. One. Two, three, four, and five. So next, you're just going to do another single crochet in the very next stitch. And this is just an anchor point, as I said. And then you're going to skip a stitch and begin another single crochet to anchor your next shell. So we've done the anchor. And now to begin the shell. One. Three, four, five, and then anchor again with a single crochet, skip one and then another anchor. And you're gonna repeat this, as the pattern indicates, the written pattern, you're gonna repeat this all the way around until you get here where you begin your slip stitches. I'll meet you at the end of this round. Okay, so now you should have your shell stitch border uh, created all around, except for here where we're gonna do the neck, and as you can see, it just kinda makes the, the little body of the chicken. So you're almost done. Uh, you literally at this point are just pretty much going to have to do the head and then the detail work, but the main part is finished and this is super easy. All you're going to do is do six double crochets across now where you slip stitched before. So go ahead and do your double crochets and it may be a little tricky there, but just, just work with it.
And don't worry if the chicken looks a little holy. Um, when you tie off the project, you can always take the tail and, and when you're weaving in your ends, you can strategically do so so that it pushes some of the stitches together. Sometimes it's necessary, other times it's not. But uh, you chained one. Next, you're gonna do a double crochet in the next stitch. And this is just shaping the face, really. Then we're going to do another shell stitch in the following stitch. So five double crochets in one stitch. And then a single crochet to anchor that down in the following stitch. Now sometimes I make two single crochets, one right after the other. It depends on the yarn, your tension, how you like it to look. It doesn't really matter either way. In this case I'm doing two after the shell stitch. So you may want to note that. You can go ahead and cut your yarn and I always give myself a nice tail so that I have, like I said, lots of room for weaving in ends and if I want to, you know, seam anything together or correct any mistakes. So here's the basic body of Clucky the Kitchen Chicken. Um, we created a nice little eye hole just by going into that stitch five times. Next, we're gonna work on the detail work, which is super simple. Um, the basis of the chicken is done. Uh, you can add a border to the feathers. The pattern calls for this, but it's optional. If you don't like it, you don't have to. Um, I usually use a, a lighter yarn to go around, or uh, in the case of like a charcoal colored clucky, sometimes I'll do a black border. Tons of ways to customize it, really. And again, if you don't feel like it, or if you don't want to, you don't have to do the border. It's optional. So let's get on to the detail work. Okay, so I usually start with the comb first, but you can do it however you want. You attach your yarn, you do one single crochet so as to anchor the comb, and you're going to be doing something similar to the shell stitch here, but we're only going to do three double crochets in each stitch, so it's faster. Um, but you know, you wouldn't want something too disproportionately large for the comb of your chicken. So just do three double crochets in the same stitch you're gonna find your next stitch maybe even ignoring that little knot where you tied it off earlier and as you can see I haven't woven my ends in yet and I'm not gonna bore you guys with that on the video I'm assuming if you're here you know how to weave in ends, and if not, there's a lot of other good tutorials for that. So then we're going to do another anchor stitch. And then begin another cluster of three double crochets in one. And three double crochets in one stitch probably has a name like the shell stitch does, but if <laughs> I'm not familiar with the name, so. Anchor. And then another cluster. I really think that this is when Clucky begins to take personality. And as you can see, I've chosen a super bulky yarn for the comb. 
You don't have to. You can choose a regular bulky a size 5 rather than a size 6. You know, the point in the design really is you can use a lot of what you just have on hand. So now we're going to tie this off. And now we're done with the 9mm hook. You can always shape the chicken some with your hands. So next, we will start with uh, the beak. It's super simple. Um, I'm just gonna grab the yellow yarn. Um, you know, if you've done a different colored chicken or you're free to improvise, you can use black yarn or anything you want. Um, I did a blue chicken right here with a little black comb and black beak, and I think that he looks quite nice, so. And this is my Mainstays yarn. Again, big fan of it. Very soft. It, it doesn't want to come apart. I just, I really love it. And it washes well. I didn't notice any pilling or anything like that. We're going to use the 3.5 millimeter hook for the beak. And you're just going to do a simple chain of four. and single crochet across. It's very hard for me to see right now, and it's very humid and miserable out here. Chain one. I'm just going to do three stitches across now. Um, the pattern, it may call for four, but I've been kind of working with it, just trying different beak styles, and recently I found that one uh, row of each number, I, I just found that I liked the design a lot better. The beak is for some reason my least favorite part. They're cute and they're fun, but there's a lot of end weaving and I don't like weaving in ends. Does anybody like weaving in ends? I kind of doubt it. Then you're gonna do two stitches. Chain one. And just kind of go in there and do one stitch. And as you can see, you've got a rough triangle and heavy thunder in the background. We're going to go ahead and cut this, tie it off. And you know, this little tie off is actually going to help add to the pointiness of the beak, as you can see. Now you can kind of shape it with your fingers a little, and when you go to weave in the ends, you can actually make the sides more uniform, and you can sort of manipulate the triangle to look better. It's just a quick little beak, and you're going to sew it right here, obviously. And again, you can use these ends to help shape your chicken uh, by sewing stitches together if you're not happy with any of them, um, sewing to better shape your beak. I'm not going to bore you with weaving in the ends here for this chicken. For the border, the optional border, you're going to want to use a 5mm hook and some size 5 yarn, or you can double strand some worsted weight yarn. Um, I have a couple other examples of others that I've done recently. You've already met Big Blue. Then there's this guy. Uh, his border is actually a double stranded worsted weight that I just happen to have on hand. And here's the Rhode Island Red I mentioned earlier. So as you can see, Clunky the Chicken is very easy to do. There's tons, really limitless customization options. Um, if you make mistakes, it's easy to fix it. Uh, you can really just do anything with this pattern. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope that it's helped you. Um, 
I'd really appreciate it if you'd take the time to like the video and subscribe to my channel below. Uh, again, if you need any help with Magic Circle, I have a tutorial on that, which uh, you can click on below. There's also a printable PDF version of the pattern available on my Ravelry and Etsy shop. I hope you enjoy, and uh, thank you for checking out Fresh Off the Needles.